All right, we got another Apple Watch upgrade video. This is my Apple Watch Series 4. And uh, Watch OS 10.1 is out. We've been watching it for a few days. Looks like it's okay. So we're going to try it on my old watch here. I'm going to show you how to get it. Show you how to put it on. If it doesn't run, we're going to back it back out. But uh, I'm going to show you what the enhancements are and the bug fixes and all that stuff and everything. So y'all hang with me. We're going to get down on the desk and do this. Hey everybody, Scott Burnett here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well today. Hope you're having a good day. All right, let's get my watch down here on the table. Show you how to put this update on and we'll get after it. Okay, here we are. I, so just in like in my last video for the Apple Watch, we're going to go here on our iPhone. You have to have an iPhone to do this on the older watches. So we're going to go here and go to the watch app. Just type watch in the search and there you go. We're going to go general and software update. And as you see, here's watch OS 10.1, 496 megabytes. It says it includes new features, improvements, and bug fixes. A uh, double tap feature, which is on Series 9 and Apple Watch Ultra. So I don't have to worry about that. Name drop. Uh, series 7 or later. <laughs> my card. Fix my bug for the climate section. Maybe it'll fix mine. Uh, just a lot of bug fixes, but mainly the the updates are for the higher end seven and above, nine and above, and the ultra watches. So, you know, not much mine can do. So let's uh let's plug my watch up. You always want to do this under power. So I got my little charger there. It's charging. And I've got it to where I don't have automatic updates, don't have beta updates. So we're going to go ahead and hit install. Put your passcode in. You have to agree to the terms and conditions. You might want to read them every once in a while. And then it's going to verify. And now it's installing. Now it'll go through a reboot on the on the watch. And as you see, it's rebooting. Here's the Apple logo. And my watch is getting old. The newer watches will reboot a whole lot faster. Mine, not so much. Probably going to go through an upgrade cycle here before long on my phone and watch. These have been really good devices for me, though. I really, it's really been good. Okay, it says do not restart Apple Watch or remove it from its charger until the update completes. So we got to remember that. So when it finishes, I'll come right back. I'll tell you how long it takes. It is now 1.37. We started about 1.35, so we'll come right back. Okay, so it looked like it took about 11 minutes. So I'm back here, 1.46. And um, everything looks normal. It's charging. A double tap works for that. Shows my calendar, my app list. Now this is a new thing that they put on uh, WatchOS 10 where you can uh, get to all your stuff really quick. Like my activity. That's pretty cool. And then I can start a workout. So. All that's pretty cool. Um, my phone does say I'm at Watch OS 10 now, so that's good. All right, so now let's talk about what's in the uh, fixes here or the enhancements. Okay, so I came over here to uh, MacWorld. They usually have some pretty good write ups on. Uh, What's going on with the Apple world here? Watch OS 10.1 uh, adds a new double tap feature. That's key benefit of the Apple Watch Series 9 and Ultra 2, which doesn't work for me. 
name drop support, both iPhone to watch and watch to watch. So if you have a watch, your friend has a watch or your wife, husband, whatever, tap the watch and your contact information can move from watch to watch. The name drop thing, you can do it on the iPhones too with the newest updates. Uh, that requires a watch SE2 Series 7 or Ultra, which none of this works for me. Let's see. Double tap, name drop. My card is available as a complication. I guess that has all your information and the card. Addresses an issue that causes a white selection border to be unexpectedly displayed after turning off assistive touch. Fixes an issue where cities may not sync between iPhone and watch and weather. I haven't had that problem. Resolves an issue where the scroll bar may unexpectedly be visible on the display. I have seen that one. Fix for bug that causes elevation to be incorrect for some users. I haven't seen that one. Um, then we have the new features. So not a whole lot here. We'll see how battery life is. Battery life on Watch OS 10 has been great. You know, even as old as my watch is, I've had this thing for several years now. I don't have any problem going at least almost two days with it. With And with the amount of text messages and emails and everything else I get, it's been amazing. Uh, like the iOS 17, the battery life on my iPhone XR has been great. So it's really been a really good update cycle for this. So anyway, there you have it. Watch OS 10.1. It's going to be a good update for me, I believe. Um, the watch isn't overheating or anything. I can't feel it burning my wrist. So anyway, uh, if you got any comments, any questions, how it's went for you, let me know. If you got any questions, put them down there. I will answer every one. I try to answer every question best I can. If I can't find the answer, I'll find somebody that does know what it is. So hope it makes sense. Anyway, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell to be notified. And if you're on Rumble, do the same thing. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a great day and a great weekend. And like I always say, until the next video, thanks for watching.